So building off of this then, how often and how much should we be feeding our juvenile bearded dragons? So um, what I usually recommend clients to do is to give them, um, you know, five or six uh, size protein items, cricket, roach, um, the size between their eyes, just as a size wise, give them five to six. Um, and then that volume, you give them um, three times as much vegetables and you have it there. And then you just do that once a day. This is for the first early period when you get them small and that will, they'll grow. They'll grow quite rapidly. And once you get them, because when they're, when you first get them, they're about eight grams, nine grams. Once you get them to about 30 to 40 grams, you can start feeding that every second day and just really slow them down. Um, you know, ideally, generally slowing them down. So they're, you know, it will take them, you know, at least six months to get to about this big and keep them lean. If you start seeing them start getting, it, it's hard because it's like, us looking at Labradors, everyone thinks Labradors are meant to be fat and rolly, but once you see a working Labrador, you don't know what type of dog it is because you've never seen something like that before because you, society just doesn't know what a normal-looking Labrador looks like. Um, and I feel that society doesn't know what a normal bearded dragon is meant to look like. Um, so it's really hard, but if they come in and it's starting to look fat around the midsection, I tell them to stretch it out an extra day for feeding. Um, just to slow them down because it's it's so hard because of genetics um it's so hard to go okay you must feed them this much this and then they get to this size um it's all about portion control if you go okay i'm feeding five items of the size between their eyes and then you know three times as much veggies you buy weight and then at least if you go okay it's getting fatter okay reduce it to four roaches, four crickets, and then keep the veggies the same. And, again, you know, you keep putting it down or up depending on the way the stomach's going. And this is how, you know, this is a lot more reliable way than going, okay, it must be this way or, you know, you must feed this. Um, and that works for, you know, all species, um, you know, humans, if you want to go there as well. <laughs> if I'm starting to look a bit fat, I just, you know, ease up on my ice cream portion every night. <laughs> Um, we've actually prepped the body condition oh, uh, pictures of our all of our our three better dragons for you to look at the body condition so people get a reference later on. But before we go down that route, um, you mentioned obviously saying like three to four like crickets. I just want to specify you mean individual insects and not four boxes of crickets. Just want to just oh, yeah, specify yeah. yeah, 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 individual. Like they they would get they'd be lucky to get the number of insects that we give them, that people are giving them, like some of the recommendations of as much as they can eat in 15 minutes for three times a day, and people complaining that their their bearded dragon is costing them a bomb because they've gone through, you know, three or four boxes of crickets in the week and stuff like that. It's just they don't need to eat that many. It's just it's just ridiculous. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not doing them good. The calcium requirement, to get the calcium requirement that they need, those things, so if you're feeding them that many crickets or roaches, you're going to have to be putting that much calcium dust on them to equal out the calcium phosphorus ratio. So you'd have to be, you know, imagine if you fed them 40 crickets and the cricket is anywhere between 1 to 7 to 1 to 10 calcium phosphorus ratio, but you've got to try and flick that the other way, you're going to have to put volumes of crickets in just calcium in the weight of calcium, even that out, to get them to grow properly without any issues, bone issues. So how do juvenile beardies hunt in the wild? Are they cruising around or are they just sitting waiting no. to see a bug? No. So they're usually sitting... Um, so the, where we find them, we find them in bushes. They hold onto the branches in the bushes and, you know, they're deep within the bushes. They're getting scattered light coming into them. Um, usually they're, you know, so they're, they're hidden from predators. Um, and by the time they're born, it's like usually around Christmas time is when their first ones are coming out. And that's quite hot. So they're sitting in a tree, you know, 
the temperatures are around 35, 40 degrees. So they're getting plenty of heat. Um, and then when an insect runs by, they jump out of the tree, grab it, and then climb back up that tree. Well, a bush. It's, you know, it's a two foot high bush. Three to um, them. And that's, <laughs> and that's, that's what they're, that's how they're, they're surviving out there. They, they really like to hide in, um, you know, branches and stuff that, that they're well designed for, um, you know, breaking up their patterns. So that's how they, they like to live. And then they just jump onto an object or, you know, if there's any fresh greens coming up, uh, little herbage, they'll take bites of that as well. The clip you've just watched is just a snippet of a larger podcast episode where we had Bede Vet on the podcast. If you want to find the full podcast episode, you can find that up here. Or if you want to carry on looking through the Bede Vet Explained series, you can find the rest of it down here.